Hi, I'm Malcolm Williams, Chief Executive of the Shipwreck Mariner Society. In this short video, I want to bring you up to date with some of our activities. But first, I wish to thank all of you who have donated to us or bought our Christmas, birthday and correspondence cards, or all three. You have been extremely generous this last year, despite the ongoing recession. In the case of the cards, we bucked the national trend and increased our sales, despite the doomsayers' warnings. We have, we believe, a good and unique product. This has enabled us to provide much needed support to those facing financial hardship among the former seafaring community. Last year, we made grants in over 2,500 cases of need at a cost of just under 1.5 million. This amounted to 85% of all our expenditure. We handled 685 applications for assistance, not all of which we were able to help. We also reviewed the circumstances of over 380 beneficiaries, something we do every three years for all those we pay regular grants to. 86% of the grant's expenditure went to just over 2,000 regular beneficiaries who receive a biannual grant equivalent to £13 per week. Not much, but we believe it can make an enormous difference helping with budgeting, particularly at a time of rising utility bills. The balance were for one-off grants, over 440 of them, covering everything from beds and bedding to washing machines, essential household repairs, mobility aids, software to assist blind former mariners, and rent deposits for homeless ones. 37% of our beneficiaries are ex-merchant navy and 45% former fishermen or their dependents. The balance having served in both and some in the Royal Navy as well. They range in age from 37 to 104, an average 75. I would like to share three cases with you which give an idea of the range of circumstances in which, with your support, we are able to help. A 72-year-old widow, a regular beneficiary who cares for her severely disabled adult son, was asking for help to replace her front door. As she lives in the Western Isles, the cost of living, in particular food, Heating, which is by oil, and electricity is particularly high, and a new front door was important to help keep the drafts out and the house warm. With no savings, it's difficult to see how she could have afforded it. We made a grant of £922 to cover the cost. A 58-year-old fisherman and his wife, neither of whom is in good health, and who have custody of their seven-year-old granddaughter, had been without central heating and hot water since the floods of 2007. Uh, they wash using an electric shower. Their boiler and the pipework had been damaged and that, at that time, and unluckily, they had been changing insurance companies and both refused to pay up. Without insurance and no savings, they had been unable to afford the repairs. They also had mortgage arrears. Their plight had only recently come to light, and our honorary agent had managed to obtain a grant towards the work through a local fund and was asking if we and a fellow maritime charity, the Siemens Hospital Society, could make up the shortfall of £1,700, which we did between us. A 40-year-old married man had been registered blind and was asking for help to upgrade his computer with specialist software for the blind so that he might be able to get a job and support his family once again. He was currently volunteering at a charity that finds work for disabled people and was hopeful that with this equipment he would be able to find permanent paid employment. We were pleased to cover the cost of £1,399 and have since learned that he is now working. We deal with grant applications as quickly as possible. There is a grants meeting almost every week throughout the year to make decisions on applications for assistance because we believe a speedy response to need is essential. This year sees the introduction of some major welfare reforms and although many of these are much needed, not least to simplify the system and make it understandable to us mere mortals, some will undoubtedly create problems. For example, the devolution of the discretionary element of the social fund to local authorities with no ring fencing and a reduced budget. 
This was a source of finance for essential household items, such as white goods and beds. We believe we will see more people coming to us for assistance as a result. The housing benefit cap will create problems for some individuals where moving is not a straightforward option. And when cuts are taken in conjunction with the utility bill and food price inflation, this could mean more people seeking charitable assistance. Of wider concern is the perception that everyone who is on benefits is somehow cheating the system. That's both untrue and unhelpful. Each year we help several new beneficiaries claim their pension credit entitlement. Many of them do not know they can claim this means-tested benefit. So they are effectively being denied 25% of their pension entitlement. Turning to a different subject altogether, since 1851, when we ran eight lifeboats and before we gave them, and a small grant, to the RNLI, we instituted annual awards for skill and gallantry at sea. Currently we make four awards. The Edward and Maisie Lewis Award for an outstanding air sea rescue, which most recently went to the crew of 771 Squadron from Naval Air Station Coldrose who rescued two crewmen from the yacht Andriette at night in atrocious conditions 75 miles southwest of the Isles of Scilly. The Emil Robau Award for an outstanding sea rescue went to helmsman Darren Crow of the St Abbs Head lifeboat for his part in rescuing a man injured and suffering from cold trapped in a rock tunnel on a rising tide. The Lady Swathling Trophy for an outstanding feat of seamanship went to helmsman Roger Jackson of the Exmouth Inshore Lifeboat for his exceptional seamanship in rescuing four men from a capsized boat in the X estuary in very dangerous conditions. And finally an individual commendation went to Master Air Crewman Richard Taylor of the RAF for his courage and determination as winchman in the rescue of survivors from the MV Swanland at night in stormy conditions off the Isle of Anglesey. This year marks the 70th anniversary of the Battle of the Atlantic. And we have identified some of our beneficiaries who were in the Merchant Navy or the Royal Navy at that time and who have interesting stories to tell. During the Battle of the Atlantic we assisted just over 35,000 survivors from over 300 ships who were landed at 23 of our major ports. This was mainly the provision of clothing, temporary accommodation and travel back home. During the whole of the Second World War we helped over 80,000 mariners and their dependents. It was as a result of our activities in both world wars on behalf of mariners that in the early 1950s the Admiralty gave us the large red painted collecting mines that are still to be found on some of our seafronts today, although there are many fewer than there used to be due to the ravages of time. In order to finance our work, we rely on donations from the public and some maritime related companies, income from investments, generous grants from Seafarers UK and Trinity House, and sales of our charity cards. Legacies are also very important to us, the generosity of one generation enabling us to help the next. Be in no doubt your donations to us make a real difference to people's lives. On behalf of the Society and our beneficiaries, thank you for your support. <laughs>